galley module. It's not finished, but it's rock solid. Very easy to put together. Did I say easy? I meant to say tedious. Once you've got your plans and measurements all set to go, it's cut, drill, and wrench. Cut, drill, and wrench. There's a lot of wrenching. battery bridge has a pretty serious job. It has to securely hold close to 250 pounds of components in every direction while you go careening about the countryside, making hard right turns and jackrabbit lane changes. It's going to be pushed and pulled and stretched and it can never fail. This bridge has got to be gutsy. This support beam has four points of connection to the van body. Its main function is to hold the assembly against the van wall. Using 5 16 brass coated stainless steel riv nuts, I was able to add an extremely strong connection to the van body anywhere it was needed. Back when I designed the floor system, I placed the frame members in strategic locations to carry the load straight through to the van floor. This is just basic engineering. So this was the uh, inch and a half material I was going to use for the floor. And I put the kibosh on that and I went with one inch material. So what that left me with here, this is a very specific um, piece that I bought for the flooring. It's got these channels on two opposite sides and it's got a smooth section on opposite sides. So in the case of framing like this, it was a little difficult to work with. Uh, I had to do some tapping uh, of my own screws, for instance, right here. I had to tap into that uh, smooth face to get a bolt in there. From that corner to this far corner, I don't think it's even out of sixteenth of an inch. I just put it all together, lined it all up, tightened it down. As you know, I'm making all my elbows, my aluminum elbows out of 1 8 inch stock. So I buy three to six foot sections at a time and I cut it up and drill it out. Now I'm making these uh, flat joining plates, mending plates, bridges, whatever you want to call them. Same thing, flat stock, 1 8 of an inch. And uh, I use a combination of carriage bolts and hex bolts. All right, here's what we got to do. I need to put this piece right here. This is going to be a support for my kitchen module, and it's also the end of the wall for the battery compartment. So here's what I did. I started by putting a riv nut in the wall with a carriage bolt. I turned this carriage bolt all the way in, and then what I got is when I get this baby on it's tight now when I put put this on and roll it back down it's perfect it gives it a nice tight locks it right in see that so that's what I got here I made this little sleeve plate 
it's rock solid now. And then what I do is my kitchen module comes in on top and this plate holds it against the wall and down pressure. Rock and roll. So this is the, uh, the battery compartment. This is, going to, this is going to house a 600 amp hour. Let me just show you. I'm over here now. So here's what I got. Bat. Oh, you didn't think I actually had the real components already, did you? No, no. They're coming. They're coming. I'm still working out the details. But these are scale models. These are the exact sizes, not the exact weights, though. So this is a 600 amp hour lithium battery. One big battery. It's a Mama Luke. And then you combine that with this 3000 watt inverter charger that's going to be running this whole shebang. Solar controller and a really cool battery management system. Got a lot of room down here. I'm going to need it because this is 160 pounds. This is 75 pounds. These two guys are 10 pounds a piece, so they don't really make much of a difference. But I need to build a truss system under here to spread that load across this bridge. Was that uh, Leonardo da Vinci that made that bridge? I don't know. But I'm going to try to do something similar. And of course, I'll cover this with uh, thin slate. All right, here's a, a quick rundown of some of the little stuff I just got from Amazon. Torx. Torx or star bits. Everything in that Mercedes is Torx. So I needed a set of Torx bits for my sockets. Of course, I need Loctite. Going to use plenty of Loctite. And that goes with all of these nuts and bolts and washers and, and such for um, the 8020. That's what that's all about. I got some drill bits because I got a drill press. These are guide stops, drill stops, sorry, drill stops. I'm putting these on my drills so when I have to drill out the holes in the van, I don't punch all the way through and come out the outside of the body. That would be hard to explain. So these are going to stop me before I push through to the outside. I've got no faith in this thing. This is the Rivnut tool. I don't think this is going to work at all. The reviews I've read, it sucks. But the, option, the alternative to this is a really nice pneumatic tool from Avdel. It's a pneumatic rib set gun, rib nut gun. Really nice. I'm going to probably end up getting that. It's very expensive. But like I said, we'll see how this goes. Stainless steel rib nuts for the floor. Uh, this is really good stuff here. These are all of my, these are dash tools. And these are really nice to pop off all your dash plates, your plastic panels all around the van. I've already used these extensively in the van. This one particularly. Uh, if you want to go around and pop off these body panels to seal them up, these are the tools you use. This is really your workspace. And it is almost six feet long. I cut it back two inches. So it's 70 inches from the sink face to the end. This will be a drawer. This space right here is a drawer for cutlery, whatever you want. This is another drawer down here. See this area right here? That's going to be a drawer. Here, you're going to have a lid in the countertop. The countertop is all smooth, one level, but right here you're going to lift up the countertop. There'll be a stainless steel heat shield, although you don't need it, and you're going to have a double induction cooktop in here. And it's going to be a portable. You can take it out of here and bring it outside, plug it in outside if you want. It's not hard fixed into the, uh, into the galley, but it is going to live in this recess right here. The nice thing about them is that they really only generate heat up through and into the pot. And I'm going to actually get a full set of pots to go with the van. So uh, you've got the right cookware for this cooktop. So here it sits. Nice and tidy, recessed, close the lid, you're back in business. The entire base cabinet is a toe kick. I recessed it back almost two inches. And what I'm going to have here is between these two pillars is going to be a nice pair of uh, teak louvered doors. 
louvered for the airflow. Remember, we got batteries in here, we got the inverter charger. So the, the nice thing about this system, besides it being lightweight and modular, is uh, we're, it's not box construction like a typical kitchen cabinet would be. It's not plywood boxed in. It's wide open. The only place you're going to have covers is on the faces of this. It's going to be open under here. So you've got airflow. So I found a company, a, a woodworker, that's going to build me two beautiful teak doors with louvers. And I think these door panels will be teak also. And then probably a nice white, uh, maybe a glacier white Corian countertop. I don't know about that yet. But that's my, the recess is what gives you a feeling of even more space because you don't have the boxes coming out into the aisle and creating an aisle. You've got shapes. Everything in here is sculpted. Everything is deliberate for a reason. Spaciousness, open feeling, cantilevered. The end of this counter, the end of this whole module is cantilevered, hanging out in midair. I love that. This is empty space. You could put an ottoman in here. You could put a little corner curio if you want. Wide open. 